Welcome to the final episode of the Top 100 Games of All Time. These are the best of the best. Top 10 games right here. Brought to you today by The Board Midwestern Meeple with special guest star, Alice. Let's take it to the boardroom. Hey everybody and welcome to the top 10 of my 100. You notice that there's this empty seat right here and I'm going to have some special guest. And today's special guest, will... what are you doing here? But bro, I was totally told you need a top 10 special guest, man. Dude, I told you, you can't be involved. All right. Look, next Ricky, time. you're just going to have to go. I can't have you. I got another special guest. Maybe next time. We'll get you on the next top 10. Don't worry about it. All right, see you later. All right. Now, as I was saying, here's my top 10 with our special guest, Alice. Say hi, Alice. Hello. All right. And that is, we're now ready to go. Me and Alice are going to do our top 10s of all time. Get ready. Let's hit it. All right, so what you're about to watch is our top 10 videos. Or, <laughs> is our top 10 board game video. The first five here, 10 through 6, is going to have an audio issue. But 5 through 1, we fixed that, and now it should be fine. So you should hear us fine, and there shouldn't be anything going on. So let's watch them all. Number 10. And we're back. For number 10. My number 10 is Australia. This is a one to four player game where you're going up against the old ones in Australia and the zombies and Cthulhu are just taking out your you and your opponents and you kind of have to work together but you want to make sure that you don't fully work together because you're also going to try and beat them because it's not really a co-op it's very quietly a semi-co-op that uh i don't think alice has played no i haven't played that <laughs> so sounds good though <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty fun game where you're taking on zombies and Cthulhu, the master of them all mm. and then number 10 my number 10 is cash and guns the second edition in cash and guns you're like all thieves and at the beginning of the turn you have two cards one is bang and one is click click if you just want to get the better loot, then you could have it click, click, and point your gun at someone. So that it's like you aren't actually going to hurt them, but you just want them to get out. Like, you don't want them to get any loot. And there, after that, you would have, like, a, you would show the loot, because, like, some people will get out, and some people will stay in, because they don't think you're actually going to shoot them when no one's pointing their gun at them. But then you would show the loot, and people would pick their loot, and that's about it. <laughs> and the winner of the game has the most loot at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah. I played this one with you, and uh, this was in my top 100. Uh-oh. This was in my top 100. And we'll fix that camera in a little bit, right on the number 9 here. Number 9. We're back, and here's our number nines. Back with a better uh, camera view. And we'll start over here with my number nine, Spirit Island. Now, now I enjoy co-op games. I like to play a lot with family members. Family, friends. Friends. And we all get together, and on this one, you are trying to save the civilization of the island from a bunch of um, outsiders that are... No, you, it's outsiders. That are coming to take over the island. And we're the spirits. Oh, we're the spirits. <laughs> yes. So we're the spirits trying to take over the island. Or protect the island. And some of the spirits will take over water. And flush out the the uh, in invaders. Or you... Fire what? Fire like is one. Exploded, yep, like yep. You can have fires going. Or you have trees who can like... you Make just borders. Make big trees. Yeah. And that's like attack. Like in uh, Lord of the Rings. I've never which, watched that. Which you probably haven't watched. No. <laughs> no, I haven't. I but, haven't even played this game. 
it's a it's a fun game. It's really complex, which is why you haven't played it yet, but we'll get to it soon, I'm sure. And I really enjoy this one. That's why it's at my number nine, Spirit Island. My number nine is Sea Salt and Paper. In Sea Salt and Paper, you to start the game, one of the like it has like two people, maximum of like something, I don't know. I think it's four. Four it's like two to four players, and then you would like the first player would pick two cards and then pick which one they want and put it in the other one put it in the discard pile. Then the person after you would either pick two cards from the deck or pick one of the, the card that you put in the discard pile mm -hmm. if they want that card. Um, that's about it in Sea Salt and Paper. Then at the end, like if you have like seven points, no, I think no. it's more. I think you're trying to get around. You want seven points per round to trigger the end of the round. If yeah. You want. But That's the end of the game is yeah, and then and the then end. you would either say like last try, or like yes, you can. <laughs> if you think you have more points than everybody else at the table, you can say like last try or whatever, and then everybody gets one more chance to try and get as many points as you did, and if they don't, you get a bonus. And then it, you play the like 30 some points or something like that. Yeah. I just like the game because some of them, there's like, if you have three of this animal, you get like nine points. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do. Like, I just try to grab like all of the seashells. And then I have like a gigantic hand. And like most of them are like those cards. And all then, the same. And then when someone says last try, I either pick it and get what I want. And then they. They, then we um, see how many points each person gets, and I win because they gave me another try, and I have so many points. <laughs> yep, you have the set, which is worth tons of points if you get a tons bunch of, of the set. Yeah, and then I played with you once, and then, like, I think I played with you once, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, gee, I wish I didn't say last try. <laughs> yeah, that last try can always get you. Yeah. And then you don't get the bonus, and I think you lose something for it, too, but I'm not... I, I don't think remember. you lose something for it. Okay. I just think the person who won gets a bonus. Gotcha. I think that's about it. Yep. Yeah, cool. Well, that's our number nines. Let's get down to those number eights. Number eight. And we're back with our number eights. My number eight is a Simon game, I do believe. And this one is a very fun rising sun so you got i think it's up to five factions and you're one of the factions and you guys are basically fighting for control of land areas and you're trying to get your armies built up and you're trying to bring in these other monsters to be on your team and what you're basically trying to do is just take over what you can but not too much and you want to try and be partners with at least one person at the table because you get extra perks for being partners so it's tricky if it's a five player game because one person typically won't have a partner mm. but like four is a pretty good spot and five it's still pretty good at five and i've seen people run away with the game and score like 100 points while everybody else had like 40 or i seen it be a very close where everybody was like at 100 points each so it's a very it's still pretty balanced even though it sometimes the one person can run away with it but it's so much fun just trying to fight for areas and take over areas and be in control of the world. <laughs> control of the world. That's right. Everybody who, wants that. <laughs> who doesn't want to be in control? I don't want to be in control. Well, that's fair. You don't have to be in control of the world. It's probably smarter to do it that <laughs> way anyway. <laughs> so, that's my number nine. Or my number eight, sorry. Rising Sun. My number eight is Quirkle. In Quirkle, you start with like six tiles, and they either have like they have a color and a shape on them, and you want to arrange them so it's like sh like one of them is color, but different shapes, and then you would have like the same shape but different color, and to start you want to have those six tiles all connected so that that would be you would move it into the center, and then you and your partner or whoever you're playing with, will just add on to that over and over again. That's how Quirkle's played. <laughs> yep, until you run out of tiles, I think. Until you run out of tiles. Right? Yep. 
or like you, no one has any spot to put anything. It's hard what happens. Right. Yeah. I suppose that's possible too. Yeah, like you can run out of different colors in a row, but you can like I think like how it's harder when you have like the colors and then you have the shapes. And when you have all of the colors and all of the shapes put out, I don't think you can put anything else anywhere, which would be like really dangerous. Yeah, that would be interesting. I would, uh, I'd give this another try. I haven't played it in a while, so I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, ne neither have I. Just <laughs> I, I kind of remember, and it's really fun. Yeah, you do. You do like those. Uh, it's like a puzzly type of game. Yeah, kind of like banana grams. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, there's our number eights. And let's move on to our number sevens. Number seven. All right, and on to number seven. My number seven, another game, I don't think you, well, we were discussing this. You haven't played any of my top ten games. Yeah, but you no. played a lot of the ones between 11 and 30, I think. But yeah. you weren't here for those. I, won't, I wasn't <laughs> here for those. So I don't know any of them. I don't know what you had. That's true. Well, I do know one. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to it, if it's on your list later. But we'll see. No spoilers. We'll see. Yep. Yeah. This one is seven. Is Western Legends. Big sandbox game. Love the theme. I love Westerns. I mean, I don't like get into the big 50s and 60s Westerns as much. But I do like the 80s, 90s, and all of them. Unforgiven and all that. Uh, those movies. So, Western Legends, sandbox game, you can go around, you can either be a bad guy, be a, a outlaw, or you can be the sheriff and be the good guy trying to save the world, or save things and take out the, the outlaws. And you can play, it's got a really cool mechanism where you can get cards, like you have a hand of poker to power up your person, and... Um, what you're trying to do is you stay on a path. So you want to stay on either the good path or the outlaw path. And maybe you want to go one way, but then at some point it's like you you need to turn and go down the other path just so you can get more power and you can uh, win the game that way. It, it's really interesting and it's really fun to be jumping around the whole board because it's a big board where you can go to a bunch of different cities and have a bunch of different options. So that's my number seven, Western Legends. I would definitely be a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I believe you wouldn't even try to be an outlaw. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, as I was saying, my number seven is Silk Clover. So Clover, you have there every player. I think it's like up to four people. You have a four leaf clover, like a larger one, and mm -hmm. then like each person has a like four cards that ha are like mini four leaf clovers that have a word on each petal. Then you would try to connect each petal, like you would, there's like, you would put them on the big clover and connect each word. And pe and then after you do that, you would like take them off. It Well, after you like take a picture in your mind or take a picture with your phone or something like that, so mm -hmm. you know. And then you would take all of them off, mix them up, and wait for your turn to put your clover in the middle. Put your clovers in the middle. And yep. like then the, everybody else would have to try to be like, oh, I think these two go together in this exact spot. <laughs> yep, and when you put it in the middle for everybody else to guess, you add a random one to oh, make yeah, it even add, harder. Yeah, so they can put the random one on, in the spot where, like the one that they didn't put on, that they think the random one goes. Yep. The, the one that actually goes there is just out, and they put the random one in that spot. Exactly. <laughs> it's so confusing sometimes. <laughs> so, I'll ask you, what if you had two words next to each other, and they were, let's say, clue and life, what would you put for the one word to put those two words together on your clover, if you had clue and life next to each other? Because life is a clue. Yeah, I don't so know. <laughs> what would be your one word thing? That's a that is a tricky one, that's isn't a, it? That's a really hard one. Like if it was clue and mystery, like that'd be like All right, clue and mystery then. Let's try that. That would be like detective or something like that. Yeah, detective would be a good one. I I agree. That's a good answer. Because that puts two of them together. <laughs> we'll have to play so clover again. It sounds like you know what you're doing. <laughs> well that's I agree. So so clover is a really fun number seven. So mm -hmm. let's hit it with number six. 
number six. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> it's number six. All right, here's my number six. A lot of people have played some variation of this game at some point in time. The newest one is my favorite, and that's Clank, Clank Catacombs. Now, the reason why I like Catacombs so much is because the board actually shifts, so you never know what the board's going to be. It's a bunch of little squares, and you put them down as you walk into the room, so anything can happen. You're shuffling them up, so you don't know who's what rooms you're walking into. Unlike in Clank, um, or the second one, I can't remember the name of Clank 2, but those came with a board and you had to you see everything you're you know where you're going and whatnot this one that's what makes this one more fun for me and it's a dungeon crawl and i enjoy walking through the dungeon and i'm trying to find treasures Treasure. and power up my person so that if i run into any monsters i can battle them easy enough monsters but and you can't just go through and just take your time through the whole thing because somebody mm. can turn around and go back to the beginning first which will set the timer. And if you, once that timer's set, you have to run back to the beginning or you stay locked in the dungeon forever and you're just dead and lose. Is that only the dungeon? Because isn't there, is it only in a dungeon? Um, yeah, it's pretty much like a dungeon. You're going into like a cave. Mm. It's catacombs, so it's, yeah, it's caves. Well, but it's still kind of like a dungeon-esque. We played the game. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this one's pretty fun and it's not... Too difficult i think you'd have a good time with it so that's my number six clank catacombs you always say i probably have a good time with it <laughs> well, <that's, that's... laughs> well my number six is the quacks of quacklingberg in quacks of quacklingberg like you have there's tons of different tiles and you would like i think you'd may maybe pick some at the beginning or you mm. would just like randomly grab some I kind of forgot. And then you would, like, put them in your own bag, and then you would kind of, like, shuffle them up, and, like, each turn you would, like, grab one, I think. Yeah, so on your turn, you're grabbing out those pieces. Uh, yeah, yeah, pieces, tiles. tiles. And you're it, putting them into, like, your potion. Your potion. And you're trying to get as far on the potion scale as you can without it blowing up. Without it blowing up in your face. Yep. And then you don't want it to blow up, otherwise you, you lose some stuff. And you don't gain anything as significant as you'd like. Yeah, Cause... and I think you can, like, pick some of those tiles and put them in your bag again. Yep. Because, like, you'll eventually run out and you don't really want to be completely out of them. <laughs> yeah. Each turn you can add more power to your bag so that you can less likely to blow up in your face anyways. Hawa! Unless you're unlucky, in which case it will blow up in your face. Right after you pick the, like, fourth tile out, whether you have a hundred in there or not. But then, if you're unlucky, yeah, your like, bags can maybe, get really maybe, big maybe you should think about things. <laughs> yeah, your bags can get really, really big, too. They could, yes. Yeah. Well, that's my number six, the Quacks of Quacklingberg. Quedlingberg. Quedlingberg. <laughs> yeah, quacks right. of Quacklingberg. Quacks of Quacks of Quacks. Lots of quacks here. <laughs> Mostly just me. Yeah, mostly just me. Only hey. you, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's cut, and we're going to go to number five now. <laughs> Thank you. Number five. All right, everybody. So my number five is a bag building game similar to her number six, Quacks. However, this is Wonderland's Wars. Now, I like Wonderland's War because, for one... The theme is awesome. I always enjoyed Alice in Wonderland. And of course. <laughs> and I um I enjoy the minis and I enjoy pulling from the bag and hoping to press my luck and being able to beat my opponents at each of the little areas of Wonderland, whether it be at the Queen's Castle or out there at the Jabberwockies area or the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. I you, you can go all the way around the board and Try and just build up your powers and try to win a couple of different areas and be the best Wonderland warrior. And that is my number five, Wonderland's War. A great game, great theme, great everything. You could say that the bag pulling bard is kind of luck based, but that's part of the game. And that's why I like it. My number five is Dracula's Feast of New Blood. 
Um, in Dracula's Feast, you each have an identity. Like, everybody has a card that has, like, an ability and who you are. And um, on your turn, after you have your card and things like that, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you, would, I, you would, like, tell people, ask someone on your turn if they would to dance with you. Dancing with you means, like, I think you can ask them what they are, and they have a yes or no card that they can give you. Yep. And then you can also, if you know, if they say, like, yes, and you want to find the Dracula. So if they say, like, let's say you asked if they're the Dracula, and they said yes, then you you can accuse them of being the Dracula. Well, one of the one of the things you want to do is have the yeah. whole team. You want to know what everybody is. True, but like after you find out who everybody is and you think you know who the Dracula is, you can accuse them. But there is some powers that say if someone asks you if you're the Dracula you, and you're not the Dracula, you can say yes. So if they mm-hmm. accuse you, then I forgot what happens if they accuse the wrong person. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. But something happens. Something happens if you. Well, I think when you accuse and try to figure out who everybody is, you have to flip over your card so everybody will know who you are. I think that's what that, happens. That's what happens if you're when wrong. you try to get everybody. But it might happen if you accuse wrongly too. Anyways, that is my number five, Dracula's Feast new book. Number four. All right, no here we go time. with number four. My number four is another somewhat semi-co-op type of game, although typically nobody ever works together. It's the Great Wall. Now you got three parts of a wall. You have to build up those parts because they're going to be attacked from invaders on all three sections. And if anybody breaks through, everybody gets a penalty. So you want to work together to make sure that you stop people from breaking through. However... You kind of don't want to work on it too much and want to make other people work on it more than you or you will be farther behind getting points and getting other things done around the board. So it's really a give and take with your opponents. And I, I've played this game at three mostly, but you can play it at four or five. And I think I want to say five might be a little long, but not too bad even. So, I mean, it's got a nice balance there. But in this one, it's really cool because you got Genghis Khan is one of the expansions and like you're just fighting and you each a faction has a superpower that they get yeah, well not not maybe not super <laughs> but it's a power a power up yep and you're working your way through you're like I'm gonna go build some logs today or I'm gonna go grab some more money or wood or something I'm gonna you got so many different options to do in this game and it's just really fun and unique game. That's my number four, The Great Wall. Well, my number four is Phantom Inc. In Phantom Inc., there are, like, two people. One is the sun and one is the moon at, like, the front of the table. And then everybody else who is not the people at the front are, like, split between those two people. And then they would have, like, four that have like questions like they have seven to choose from seven to choose from yep. that have like questions like can you eat it well like harder questions like where would it be located in yeah, the world where would it be located in the world or would you eat it would you eat it <laughs> and then the people at the front would figure out the answer and then write it letter by letter and after they write one letter, the team can either say stop because they know what it is, or they can say keep going. You want to say stop because you want to find it before the other team finds it. And the people at the front have a card shared between them, and they're trying to get their team to guess it before the other team. Yep, they got the one word on that card. But they're trying to get everybody to guess. Everybody's got the same word to guess. Same word, yep. yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but they have, like, different card question cards. And I'm pretty sure you can, like, discard your hand of questions. Or, like, discard, like, two or three. And then you'll grab new ones. Yeah, once per game. Once per game. You can discard your whole hand and get new cards if you, if you really think that they're stinky. Yeah. And <laughs> when you give the cards up to the people at the front, you'll give them two different questions. They would give you the one that they're not choosing. 
Yep. You give back the card that you're not choosing. And, and then, then they would write down the answer. <laughs> yep. Exactly. It's a fun game. I like that one a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played it already just a couple weeks ago. So That's uh, our number four. Number three. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what my mind says. It says time for number three. All right. And here at number three, we're going to do Shadows Over Camelot. I've always enjoyed trader games. You'll notice that a lot from my list, and you'll see it here right now. And who knows? So, Shadows Over Camelot, (laughs) you're the trader. I'm not the trader. (laughs) You're the trader. Everybody's working together in Shadows Over Camelot. We're trying to help Arthur build back his round table with Mm. good souls and, and getting the table back to where it was. However, there could be, and usually is, somebody who's not part of the team. And it could be anybody on that team. It could be anybody at all. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely never me. So, <laughs> what you're doing is you got different areas where you can go to a, a place where you can randomly spend your cards to move closer to grab part of the, the round table swords. Or you can go and... Uh, do three of a kind in another area to battle some armor armies. And you're just doing your best to finish off each of the quests that needs to be done for King Arthur. And if you get them all done before too many catapults are attacking you or too many missions were failed, then you can win King Arthur's court here of Shadows Over Camelot. Now, will there be a traitor? Yes. And that's all we got to say about that. No, we don't need that. Yes, there's a trader right here telling us about her number three. My number three is medium. Medium is like a game where you and the person next to you are have, like you each, like there's one card that you both have and you are trying, two cards I think actually. You have, you, you each put two, down one. Two cards. So you would have like two cards between you and you have to figure out a word a single word that connects those two cards together. (laughs) So, and then everybody around the table would just do that, and then it would just be like you just do it over and over again. Yep, and each time you get it right, if you get it right in one guess, you get more points. Yeah, and if... It takes you two, then it gets you less points, and three is the limit. Just so you know I suck at this game. (laughs) (laughs) But it is fun. But if it was Clue and Mystery... Then we could do detective. detective. Boom. First try. <laughs> and then we would get possibly f- like five or six points instead of one or two if it took us three. Yeah. And y- you have to uh, change your words every guess. So if we if you pick detective and I said mm-hmm. Yahtzee, then, then we would have to connect those two words. Yep. And not use the other two that are on the table either. So it gets harder. Yeah. I like this game because the person next to you, like, will be thinking on what you're going to say, but you're thinking on what they're going to say. And then when you guys say the answers, you're like, I probably would have said that. But I didn't. I thought what they're going to say. Yep. So I have no idea what we're going to (laughs) do. Yep, you got to cross those streams. Just like in the Ghostbusters. Don't cross the streams except for that one time. You got to cross the streams to get the right answer. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two. It's time for number two. All right. We'll start off with my number two, The Thing, the board game. This was a movie in the 80s that they made into a board game. and They did such a good job with it that it's here at my number two. This is another one of those traitor game aspects where somebody out there is trying to... You can put your finger down now. (laughs) Where somebody is trying to stop the team from leaving the Arctic that you're stuck in. As everybody else is trying to power up the helicopter or getting the rover to get ready to go. So we can get out of the area as fast as we can before the thing takes over everybody. There's an infection going around that... That the one person that starts the game who's infected, he's trying to infect everybody else. Well, everybody else is trying to stay away and not get infected. 
So it's a very hard game to, like, you don't want to go into a room with somebody else necessarily unless you trust them or you hope that you can not get infected while you're in the room with them. And then, of course, they bring out these dogs who are trying to eat you, too, that you have to get rid of the dogs because they're infected. And it's just crazy how much chaos is going on. You can get attacked by dogs. You got this guy. Somebody's infected that you don't want to go near. Then you got the, then you got to turn on the power, keep the warmth on so you don't freeze to death. Really fun. The thing. The board game. That's my number two. Let's keep going. Oh, let's get out of all that thing going on. <laughs> my number two is endangered i like endangered because you're like saving animals that could get extinct but you're not actually saving them unfortunately <laughs> where you and the person next to you you have three dice each you would roll the dice after you figure out who's going first I think depending on how many players that's how many rounds you have to save the animal mm-hmm so after you roll the dice, let's say I got a one, two, and three, and you got a four, five, and six, mm-hmm. I would prob I would be going first because I have the lower numbers. But if he went first and he put a six on something like move a tiger with a tiger to get to make it so they have a kid, I can't go there because you can't go over what they under what they had. Mm-hmm. There is one that, like, if if he put a six in, like, the get money, I could put a, a one in the get money. That's, like, you could put it anywhere. Oh, okay. That one anywhere. And then I just like how every turn there's, like, you pick a card on what's happening. Like, when, after you roll, like, let's say two tigers are together, you would roll to see if they have a kid. And then after that, you would roll to see for a deforestation tile and then you would have to make sh- you would have to hope that it doesn't land on a tiger or they die mm. yeah and can they can they have more than one kid at a time no one no. kid and the hardest thing with tigers is that after they have a kid they split yep so then you have to put other two together it's also another trick for this game is w- for the tigers you would um you would mostly aim for one tiger. Like, let's say you would think, because you would roll one dice. Mm-hmm. You would pick, like, let say there's a tiger in row six. You would roll for row six. There was only one tiger there, so it's a good option. Because there's a ton of other tigers in other spots. Then you would roll it, and then you would kill the tiger. But then you would have another plan that you would have another tiger separated, separated from the rest of the group that you could aim at. So that you wouldn't kill all the tigers at once. Kill the big areas of tigers? Yeah, because you can pick a row. I think it's only a row. And then you'd roll for the column that you would put the deforestation tile in. Yeah, that's for the deforestation part. Yep. I just like how you have to communicate with your partner. And you cannot try to kill them. Right. Yeah, there's no (laughs) traitor in this one. No traitor. You cannot. (laughs) He... Will be a traitor in the games that he says there's traitors, but not in this game because there are no traitors. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I just like how you're trying to save animals, even though you're not actually saving them. Well, you save a lot of them. Yeah. And you bring, you're trying to bring them back. Trying so. to bring them back. I just hope that tigers actually do come back. That's a good number two. <laughs> so here we go with our final number one coming up. Number one. And here we go. Number one. Roll there. Boom. My number one is Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Let me guess there's a traitor. Well, of course there's a tra- <laughs> there could be a traitor in all of these games. Well, I think the thing has to have a traitor. That's part of it. But in Battlestar Galactica, you start out the game where everybody's working on the same team. There could be a Cylon out there, or they come. They'll be coming out later for sure. You always have at least one or two Cylons, and you're working on getting the ship to warp away from all the Cylons that are trying to get you from behind, because you're being chased in your ship, trying to get your ship ready to warp as fast as you can to get away from all the Cylons. So what you're doing is you're having different people characters on your 
vessel. You're trying to repair things and keep things working. And then somebody's, of course, sabotaging you. And while you're doing that, you got the sabotager. And then you're getting attacked from the outside. So you, sometimes you might need to send somebody out in a ship to shoot them off so you can protect your team. But this game is so much fun. And it's fun to play in a nice group of five or six. And you're just having a grand old time just trying to save yourselves and warp to the next area so that nothing, so that you can fly to victory and be safe on the new earth. That's my number one, the greatest game of all time, Battlestar Galactica. The greatest game for you. Well. My number one, though, is... My number one, though, is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. In Flashpoint Fire Rescue, <laughs> in Flashpoint, you are all firefighters trying to save, like, seven people. um, Like, people who are not on your team. <laughs> stuck in a building that's burning down that's burning down <laughs> <laughs> so and you kind of have a time limit because the, you have these damage cubes and if there is if you run out of damage cubes the whole house tumbles on you and you lose <laughs> yep. and it doesn't just have to be people you could save animals that are in the house but because they're, they're just question marks on the board. So you could go to one. You're like, I'm right next to a door. I could just get them out of the house really quick. You flip it over. And it's no win. It's nothing. It's blank. It's a false alarm. It's a false alarm. <laughs> <laughs> and then after you get one of those question marks off the board, you would roll to put another one somewhere. And you cannot put it in fire. <laughs> That's right. No, because then they just <laughs> die right away. So you have yeah. to roll again. And it's really hard because you all have limited actions. But I just like it how you guys have, like, your abilities. Because there's just one, one person doesn't have an ability. It just has extra movements. They're usually the person trying to get people out of the building or putting out fires. Because those both take two movements. To move a person and to put out fire. Yep. So it's just how you have to talk about what you're going to do. And you have to plan it out. Like you, after you get your characters, you're like, okay, I'll do. My ability is this. Your ability is this. We could, you can do this. I can do this. You all can do. Get people out of the building. Put out fire. Make sure the building doesn't tumble down on you. And how you get ta damage tokens, which is the really hard part, is that you take at the end of everyone's turn. You would pick, like, two dice, one that's up to ten, one that's up to six. You would roll it to see which row and which column you're putting another fire. If it lands on another fire, then it explodes. And it puts tons of damage tokens everywhere. Yeah, it can. <laughs> it, it certainly could. Certainly could. <laughs> Especially, well, it's really bad for people. Because, like, if there's a person in the room and it explodes, they I think the person dies. They could die if the fire ends up exploding and moves towards that person because it yeah. moves in its diagonal. Or not diagonal. Orthogonal? I don't remember what. I don't know what that is. <laughs> straight lines. It straight were, lines. The fire will explode into straight lines and hit people. If it hits a person, it, it destroy it, kills them. Kills them, and then you would just put them back in the pile and mix them up with everyone else or nobody else. Yep. So that's your number one. That's huh? my number one. Flashpoint, Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Oof. Great game. That's in my top 20. Pretty sure it was. Maybe top 30. I have to check back on my my stats here. It's somewhere. It's somewhere in there. It was a really good game. So, And that's it. That's our my top 100 of all time. Her top 10 of all time. Hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to do some more stuff on the channel. Uh, maybe Alice will come back and visit at some points. Some but, point. <laughs> some point. We don't know when. Yep. Who knows? But I got reviews coming up here now. My first one's going to be the Skull King. You like the Skull King. You played that once or twice. I don't think I. Wait, maybe. I don't know. If you saw it, you, you would know. But. So look out for that coming here in just a few days. And we'll see you on the channel more often. Give us some comments of what you'd like to see, uh, what reviews you might be interested in, and uh, we'll see you all later. And if you want me to come back, all right. <laughs> then you can definitely say that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you later. Have a good one.
and keep playing those fun games. Mm.